done with reach business for now, so I'm just back at Eleutheria. Want to go back to Pan to drop off all sorts of stuff, but let's explore a little bit along the way, shall we? Just like we went from here down to Pan, let's go from, like, here up to Pan. So let's go counterclockwise right from here. I went to Titania hoping there would be a smuggling quest for Eleutheria, but there wasn't. There were was still just those two ones for Whirlberry Juxtamare. through the roosts, an archipelago of silent ruins. Also, candle winds. Well, that's going roughly in the direction of Pan, which is kind of convenient. I want to go more clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, though. a library over here. Let's go all the way in there, actually. Explore this place a little bit more. I've got a decent amount of fuel and supplies, ships in good condition, why not? Outbreak of the heart sickness. This is new. A mysterious outbreak of nostalgia spreading through your crew. Frequently they stop work to stare away into misty remembrance. They gather during the evenings to meditate on times gone by and debate the ways in which the past was superior to the present. The air is full of sighs. Break out the brandy, string the fiddles. 66% chance of success. Yeah, let's do it. Yes! The crew attend reluctantly, but once the brandy has been passed around, you manage to get them telling tales of their recent adventures, of their narrow escapes and their small triumphs. It's still reminiscence, but at least it's on fresher fare than the rose-hued days of their youth. Another library. Why is... Why am I still in control of the ship? I can still shoot. What the... F Follow the scent of burning? Join them? Langley Hall? Okay, that's weird. That makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah, 
you enter Libertas, a field of freedom and gloom. Oh, what is this? Hey, wait, that's a dowser engine. That's my own people. Uh, I don't think they're going to forgive me just because I turn my lights off. No, I already shot him. Oh, man. Shots move fast. A well-aimed shot penetrates your plating. Oh, I think we got critical damage. Yeah, so I guess that answers the question. The Liberation of Night people will shoot me if I have my light on, even if I'm part of their group. The ravaged vessel is silent. Its flags have been torn off. Its name obliterated, obliterated with lamp black. The dowsers are fanatical devotees of the liberation of night. They attack any engine that dares poison the dark with its light. Scavenge its plating? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm not going to plunder the dowser with my 22% chance. From 68 health. Partial success. Disagreements in the dark. The lamplight flickers as your crew work. They're nervous. And with shaking hands comes mistakes. And with mistakes, arguments. The ruin of the dowser groans ominously. Is there still movement inside? Um, okay. For... Forget it, just call your engineers back. Job is only half finished, but it will do. As the clamp as they clamber back aboard, you see the relief on their faces. You leave the dowser and anything that survives in its lightless corridors to the cold sky. I have a plaque from my own people, which is awkward. <laughs> gain five tear and gain seven hole. A gleaming... Whoa, what is sucking me that way? A gleaming hulk in the dark, a wreck of a type you've never seen before. Something is pushing me this way. What is it? I don't see anything. Yeah. Pushing me pretty fast, too. Is this like the wreck of the Parsifal? Where it's like a whole encounter with a... Engine? Wreck of the Behringer. Whoa, I hear something. Oh, there's there's stuff here. Is that a candle wind? Yeah. And then there's something there and something there. Let's approach the wreck of the Behringer. I hope this is as big and interesting of a story as the Wreck of the Parsifal. A vast wreck larger than any other locomotive you've seen. Armor rattles in the wind. An Albion flag flies, tattered almost beyond recognition. The hull is cracked like an egg, a charred and tangled engine exposed to the air. The Behringer reads the nameplate, though some wag has appended a question mark. As you approach, you see figures scrambling behind guardrails. Revolutionary slogans graffitied across every rusted surface. The Behringer is still very much occupied. Wait, if it's exposed to the air, then, I mean... How could you live aboard this thing? Board it. A dozen figures in heavy coats hang from the side of the wreck, waving joyously as your engine docks. A masked welcome. You step into the Behringer's halls to a swelling crowd and a babble of cheery greetings. Everyone is wearing a mask. The crowd parts. A woman glides to your side. Her scarlet leather jacket gleams with buckles and vestigial straps. Her face is hidden behind a mask in the shape of a screeching bat's face. Glad to have you aboard, says the unassailable founder, shaking your hand. The unassailable founder's bat mask is impassive. She gestures to the wall of masks behind her. Choose. Sp 
speak to the unassailable founder before you don a mask, you have questions. Who is she? How did the Behringer end up out, out here? Oh, I thought these were... I thought this was like a gonna take a captivating treasure and stuff, but I think these are other things. You unlock this by not having any estimation of the founder. Not having any founder's respect scintillant. Founder's respect to a recalcitrant. Founder's respect aspirant. Founder's respect supplicant. These probably correspond to the four different skills. Veils, iron, etc., etc. This is going to be a whole big thing, isn't it? Sweet. How did a London dreadnought end up wrecked in Eleutheria, crowded with devotees of the liberation of night? The founder waves a gloved finger disapprovingly. I can't go prattling my secrets to just anyone, can I? Join our community, put your trust in us, and I'll extend some trust in return. Oh, their liberation of night. Well, this should that should make things a lot easier. Um, let's see, this this one gives the opportunity to listen to lectures, deliver lectures, conduct experiments, debate. Maybe those aren't corresponding to the four skills. Let's just listen. I don't want to debate anybody before I know anything about what's going on. Let's take the mask of the aspirin so I can listen to lectures. A sculpted silver rose, blank, eyeless, mouthless. The aspirant listens, says the founder, and blossoms. As the mask slips over your face, you realize that it is ingeniously designed so that you can see perfectly between the folds of its silver petals. The aspirant's role is to absorb, says the founder. Go to the library and read a book, or go to the forum and enjoy yourself. Stay quiet. Grow. The Behringer's rusting innards have been hollowed. The walls and floors of a dozen interlocking corridors have been methodically stripped away, carving a vast hive-like atrium draped with ladders and crisscrossed with rope bridges. Anarchists bustle back and forth between a circle of iron doors below. The largest are labeled Laboratories, Forum, and Hall of Debate. Your fellow aspirants are, by far, the most common among the masked figures. Dozens of silver-faced anarchists mill back and forth between the libraries and the forum, silent except for the occasional polite cough. So most people are aspirants, they're learning. Makes sense. Head to the forum, speak to the founder, leave. I can't do this because I need the Mask of the Scintillant. Ask the recalcitrant for debate, right? Let's let's head to the forum. A stream of aspirants, supplicants, and recalcitrants are barreling through the double doors. The forum greets you with a cacophony of competing voices and the acrid stench of gunpowder. This was once the dreadnought's vast storage room, and now munition crates have been stacked and shoved together to create a semicircle of stages. Hopefully no one lights a cigarette. The stages are occupied by supplicants, voices raised. Whoa, tell a story from your travels. You're wearing the wrong mask, but surely they won't mind if you deliver an impromptu talk. I think they would. Let's not do that. I'm supposed to stay quiet. Attend a lecture. You flit between supplicants. One is tripping over his words, another reaching her conclusion. Finally, you find a speaker whose words are intriguing. The first lecture to entice you is that given by a diminutive old woman speaking in a dry whisper to only three aspirins. But you catch the phrase, coils of shattering ice a thousand feet high. The other lecture you come across is being delivered by a, a lithe, confident figure of indeterminate gender. They're expounding on their topic at such length that you have trouble deciphering what they're talking about. Finally, you identify the topic. A certain Mr. Barleycorn. Mm. 
Mr. Barleycorn sounds very interesting. Let's see. They will both earn the respect of the founder. This one gave me terror and an Eleutherian mystery. This one will give me a sky story and an Eleutherian mystery. Plus, I'm more interested in Mr. Barleycorn anyway, so let's go with that. <clears throat> the Havd's most eminent, most enigmatic servant, declares the supplicant, striding down the stage. We all know that it is in the Liberation's best interests to keep him on side, and he is at least more scrutable than his master. So what can we do? Send him baskets of fruit? A backgammon set? The supplicant reaches the end of the stage. Pirouettes. No, Mr. Barleycorn is fond of stories. He is a collector of information, and he is a lover of music. Bring him stories, secrets, and songs, and you may win his favor. Perhaps he might even relay your words to the halved. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to make Mr. Barleycorn very happy to uh, gain an audience with the halved, which we need for our quest, finding the truth. I wouldn't be surprised if I can even gain uh, an audience with the halved, and it's more just like, I'll pass on the questions and give you your answers. By listening to a lecture, you've shown the founder that you can be an aspirant. Perhaps now she will tell you more about herself. Let's go to the unassailable founder. The founder lingers in the Behringer's central atrium, hands in the pockets of her leather jacket, chatting to everyone who passes. She combines an encyclopedic knowledge of everyone's names and habits with the uncanny ability to recognize them despite their mask. Questions? Complaints? She asks, turning to you. Or simply here to take a new role? Ask why her mask is different from the others. The face of the bat is distinctive. You've not seen another during your time aboard the Behringer. The founder laughs. My father was a diplomat for London. In my formative years, we were stationed on an island called Visage, far out to Z. The locals' lives revolved around the mask they wore. We chose our faces for ourselves. I was keen to implement something similar here. She adjusts her bat mask. This represented the worst of outsiders, the exile who brought nothing but misfortune and death. After I turned traitor and left the Admiralty, it seemed an appropriate statement. Hmm. And I now have one estimation of the founder. Yeah, I vaguely remember Visage in Sunless Seas. It's a very interesting, mysterious place. Mm, deliver lectures, conduct experiments, debate. Let's switch to the mask of the supplicant. The supplicant's job is to talk, says the founder, fastening the mask of a hideously toothed anglerfish over your face. And perhaps entice. A miniature lantern dangles from your new mask, swinging back and forth between your eyes. The supplicant gives speeches in the forum, says the founder. Thanks to the mask, a person's reputation, or lack thereof, doesn't matter here. Just stand and talk, and if you're saying something worthwhile, perhaps you'll attract an audience. Let's go to the forum. Mm, I can tell a story from my travels. It's not precisely a lecture, but as a supplicant you can speak about whatever you wish. Or deliver a lecture on the extinguishments. This will earn the respect of the founder. Deliver an origin, a uh, lecture on the origins of the cantankery. What do I need for that? You must have studied the cantankery extensively to give this lecture. I haven't? Well, how do I study them extensively? Wait. Oh, that would be the... The experiments, right? The, the mask that allows me to do experiments would be for that stuff. Hmm. Let's deliver a lecture on the extinguishments. Which, what is that again? 
That's going to take three Eleutherian Mysteries. Out in the furious emptiness, there are places that have never known light or heat. Your approach is academic, your tone matter-of-fact, but the aspirants listen as though to a ghost story. There are places of darkness in Eleutheria, you tell them, a darkness so total it devours even the memory of light. Your audience whispers and swells. What does such emptiness conceal? Unlit trains that plunged into the darkness hoping to commit crimes beyond the sight of any god. Disgraced servitors hiding for millennia from otherwise omniscient masters. At the end of your lecture, your audience are too subdued to ask questions. The specters of an extinguishment seems to hang in the air above you, fascinating and repellent in equal measure. Oh, my terror went down, apparently. I gained a vision of the heavens. And more respect. Let's leave. Back to the founder. Ask how the Behringer ended up in Eleutheria. It's clearly a huge and impressive locomotive of Albion origin. Why is it stranded in Eleutheria and stuffed with anarchists? The Behringer was a dreadnought developed in secret to guard against star madness, says the founder. On its maiden voyage, I stole it. It was easy enough. I was the admiral placed in charge of the bloody thing, she snorts. While we patrolled a quiet corner of Albion, I convinced my crew of the merits of the liberation. After a mostly bloodless mutiny, we embarked on a pilgrimage to Eleutheria. We planned to pledge ourselves to the service of the halved. Her mouth tightens. It didn't work out. Interesting. I think I rather like these people. How cool is that? An admiral aboard a extremely advanced experimental ship for London and he just steal it? <laughs> I want to do experiments. Let's go to the Mask of the Scintillant. A woman's face wreathed in glorious flames. The scintillant learns through experimentation, says the founder, putting aside concern for the safety of others or themselves. Uh, okay. Safety first. The flames on the mask are orange-yellow tissue which rustles as you move your head. The scintillant's purpose is to visit the laboratories and take part in the experiments, says the founder, clapping you in the back. Good luck. Last time I went to the laboratories, I lost a finger. Go to the laboratories. A crude orange mask symbol has been painted above the door. Next to it, someone has scrawled, Danger! Science occurs within. Deliberation have kept most of the Behringer's laboratories intact. Every functioning laboratory has a sign-up sheet tacked to its door, begging for volunteers. Scintillants flit back and forth, carrying clipboards, calipers, vapor-spewing flasks. There's no shortage of work to be done, and few brave enough to do it. Hmm. Take part in an experiment as a guinea pig. 48% chance of success. That's not great. Conduct my own experiments. 16% chance. Oof. Or conduct my own experiment getting volunteers from my own crew. Hmm. Okay. How far can I get my hearts up? Like... Ten mirrors, six veil, that's not any good. Ten iron, ten hearts, okay, that would help a lot. Wait, can I not? Oh, this... I'm not docked. This isn't a port, I can't change this. Let's take part in an experiment as a guinea pig, then. On success, this will earn the respect of the founder. Try to gain a vision of the heavens. So is that a vision of the heavens from like coming, like having a near-death experience? You approach a laboratory and begin to write your name on the sign-up sheet. Before you reach the third letter, you're yanked inside. Yes! 
here, drink this. It's perfectly safe. A scintillant presses a fizzing tube into your hands and immediately runs for cover. <laughs> you examine the liquid. The smell alone could strip the skin from a cat. Nevertheless, you drink. How odd, says the scintillant after a lengthy pause. I thought... Colors unfold from his open mouth like a kaleidoscopic chrysanthemum. For the next few days, you wander in a landscape of spirals and fireworks. When you recover, you find yourself in bed, sweat soaked, your ears still ringing. It's not the date that it was. <laughs> Vision of the heavens. And earn more respect. Let's speak with the founder. Ask about the mark on her neck. The founder's hand moves automatically to cover it up. For a moment, you could have sworn it was an eye nestled between neck and collarbone. Before we reached the wilderness, I was an admiral in London's fleet. While patrolling the Untersee, we came across something under the water. A scar, or an eye, or something. I dive to investigate. I still don't understand what happened down there, but I met something far greater than myself, and I came back with this. She brushes the eye on her neck with a fingertip. Years later, in the wilderness, I took charge of London's greatest dreadnought, still in early experimental stages. That's when the eye opened. At that moment, I knew deep in my bones that I had to seek out Eleutheria. How strange. Also, that just reminds me. I still want to go back and play the rest of Sunless Sea, considering that my game ended prematurely. And also, there is an entire DLC for that game where you can go underwater. Ah. Sorry, just daydreaming about playing that game. Alright, I think we need one more respect to ask what she's not telling you. Yeah, I need four. I have three. Let's switch to the mask of the recalcitrant so I can debate. A snarling face halfway between bulldog and gargoyle. A difficult role, cautions the founder. A squabbler. Recommended for those who've spent time as an aspirant. The mask is oddly uncomfortable, digging into your skin, cutting off the blood to your ears. You peer out through a wall of gruesome fangs. Go to the forum or the debating halls and raise hell, says the founder. Ask impertinent questions. Hit close to home. The mask allows you to speak loudly and truthfully without losing friends. Let's go to the debate. Hall of debate. Recalcitrants barge in like ants invading a rival nest. Some wit has painted over the door. Abandon the slippery slope, all ye who enter here. <laughs> The Hollow Debate was once the Dreadnought's gun deck. A row of gargantuan cannons still points out at empty sky. Recalcitrants swarm under the artillery, shouting, stamping, roaring. The main debate takes place on a raised platform. Would-be rhetoricians take center stage, declare their argument, and await challengers. Three recalcitrants state their position. Which will you dispute? The Liberation of Night is justified. Hmm. 15% chance of success. Yeah, no. I can say that the Behringer is a waste of time and should be destroyed. Or morality is a social construct that collapses without the fear of punishment. Wait, so... Is this my position, or is this what I'm debating? Which will you dispute? Ah, this this is their position. I am debating that position. Right? Like, they are... This person's saying the liberation of night is justified. And if I'm debating that, then that means... Yeah, if I challenge this, the audience won't be on my side. So I'm going against whatever they've said. Okay, I want to this. Morality is a social construct that collapses without the fear of punishment. I want to debate that. That's not my position. That's what I'm debating against. 
This recalcitrant clearly hopes to deal only in abstract philosophical matters. The audience won't have a personal stake in the outcome. Consider Plato's ring of... Gyges, <laughs> declares your opponent. If there were no consequences, no one alive could resist the power to enrich themselves at the expense of others. You offer a counter. Perhaps the majority would succumb, but there are some to whom their self-image matters more than their mask. After a ruckus back and forth, she concedes defeat, and the surrounding recalcitrants roar. Someone presses a coin purse into your hand. A bounty, he says. We've been trying to best her for weeks. By changing someone else's mind or changing your own, you've shown the founder that you make a respectable recalcitrant. Back to the founder. Ask how she recognizes everyone despite their masks. Every mask is just one among hundreds. I grew up on visage, says the founder. I don't need a face. I can hear your voice. See the curve of your neck, the way you walk. I can recognize a member of this community just by the pattern of acne on the back of their neck. When I was first establishing the community here, I quickly learned that true anonymity can turn people into monsters. She raises her hand in cheery greeting as an aspirant wanders past. Hello, Ronald. You see, the fact that I know who they are keeps the community honest. It's good to remind them occasionally. Ask what she's not telling you. You're a well-established part of the community aboard the Derringer now, and you've heard rumors. What is the Founder hiding? The Founder beckons. You follow her to the Behringer's charred engine room. Freezing winds swirl through the crack in the hole. After I stole this dreadnought from the Empire, I went to the Halved to pledge my allegiance. She pauses. But the Halved would not accept me. I was devastated. I turned the Behringer into a hub of discussion, hoping that one day we would come to a consensus that could guide me. This is no wreck. She rubs at the charred boiler with a gloved finger, smudging black dust away to reveal gleaming iron beneath. That's all illusion. The hole can be fixed in a day. The rust was applied by paintbrush. The Behringer is ready for war. As soon as I decide war is more important than debate. Oh. Oh, I like this a lot. So it's ready to... F the Liberation of Night is ready to fight with this at a moment's notice, basically. We might need that. Gain a Crimson Promise, Estimation of the Founder, Three Savage Secrets. That's so intriguing. Me being a member of the Liberation of Night. Hmm. Is there anything else to do here now? Swap stories with the unassailable Founder. She greets you with a hand clasp clasped warmly on your shoulder. You follow the founder through a nearby hatch. She leads you up to a cubbyhole where the habitual din of the Behringer is muted, and two battle-scarred armchairs await you. Between them, a well-stocked drink, Captain. The two of you sit and chat long into the evening. You tell her about patches of darkness, wefts of time, brushes with monsters and madness. She shares hair-raising tales of her perilous escape to Eleutheria and rumors about some of the more outrageous vagabonds and oddballs who have recently passed through the Behringer. Leave the conversation. Let me just leave the Behringer completely because it's getting real laggy. Your crew express a measure of relief at leaving behind the Behringer's babble. Its crowds, its ceaseless bustle. Not to mention the riotous smell of rust and sweat and gunpowder. As the unremittent darkness swallows your train again, the crew's relief turns to dismay. Maybe the Behringer wasn't so bad, they say. Maybe you could turn around? 
Sure thing. Yeah, oh my god, this is taking so long. The game's not responding now. There we go. Whoa! Don't do that. I guess I could try more stuff with the masks? Let's try. Mask of the Aspirin. Let's go to the forum. I'm kind of curious what would happen if I try to tell a story from my travels. Now that I'm not too worried about getting people's respect. An interrupted story. Okay, I don't think it went well. You climb onto an unoccupied stack of bomb crates and launch into a reliable favorite from your stable of anecdotes, but are quickly overwhelmed by jeers from the audience. You've got the wrong face on, Aspirant, shouts one of the bulldog mask recalcitrants. The crowd surges forward and topples you from your stage, passing you like a parcel to the exit. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's not do that. Mm. Oh, more time must pass before I can attend a lecture again. Okay, so I probably can't do anything more, but... But let's try a different mask. Oh, whoa. I didn't know that would totally leave. Mm, opportunity to conduct experiments. Can I do this again? Oh, what did, what did that say? Wait. Oh, make your way to the laboratories. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, yeah, I, I can't do anything more here right now. <clears throat> All right. That was a very interesting encounter. I wonder if that would go differently if I wasn't a part of the Liberation of Night. To be honest, it didn't seem like they recognized me as being part of the Liberation of Night at all. They certainly didn't mention it. So maybe it just wouldn't make any difference. Let's see what these things are. Let's see what this ghastly thing over here is. Oh. Clotted Knight. Alright. You thing, come out of there. You coming? Huh. That's something will come out of it. Alright. Well, let's go check out that one. Oh right, I saw the star shine on me. The one extra one that I bought. Is that a watch? Success! I was thinking of just spacing it, but I think I can maybe sell it back here in Eleutheria. More clotted night. Man, I'm just inching along. Holy shit. I'm barely moving at all. Give me the mystery. Um, let's see if I can get it to follow me somewhere else. I don't want to fight it in that wind. Ah! still in the wind, very much so. Shit. Oh, Dowser engine, I think. This should be good. Wow, we're just like, we're at Lingley Hall. I don't think I want to do anything here just yet, though. You still coming after me? Man, why am I so slow? What the hell? Something wrong? I shouldn't be this slow. 
Look at this. I'm going full speed. It's almost like I'm still in the wind, but it didn't properly remove itself. Like the status didn't remove itself. Uh, okay, there. Now it's okay. Weird. Let me just see if I can get a quick port report. Whoa, what is this? His Lordship's Grand Clear Out. The maids of Langley Hall hustle you into a quiet corner of the house where they're auctioning off some of Lord Langley's unwanted possessions at bargain prices. Hell yeah! His Lordship won't mind, they assure you, because his Lordship will never find out. Acquire a roll of Thirsty Bombazine. For 90 sovereigns, that's great. It was a curtain in the hollowed hallway once. The moths have dined upon it. The maids hurry you out of the room, promising to sneak the goods onto your engine as soon as possible. They prove as good as their word. Yeah, can I get a port report real fast? Yes. Um, uh, shit. How do I leave? Do I have to sign out? No, just leave lightly. Oh. Yeah, okay. Ooh. Three bronze wood. Holy shit, whoa! What was with that speed? And now I'm super slow again. Maybe it's not a messed up status effect on me, but it's just like the region of the candle wind is... I don't, like, it's behaving as if the candle wind is right here and I'm going against it, even though it isn't. And then, just a second ago, it was behaving as if uh, the same thing. I was going with the wind, so it was super fast. It just seems to be fucked up. So I just need to get outside of its damn grasp and I should be okay. Come on. Come on. Dear God. Really? What the hell? But if it was acting as if the wind is here, then it would be blowing me. But if I stop moving, then I just stop moving entirely. What the fuck? Oh, we got critical damage a while ago. An unexploded shell. Mm, I'm gonna disarm it myself. 92% chance of success. Oh, fuck. Did your hand slip, or did your engine jolt as it struck some stellar debris? Regardless, a pipe breaks, jetting steam over the shell. Its casing quickly becomes too hot to touch. You order the area evacuated. The detonation, when it comes, is deafening. Eat hole. That's not too bad, actually. Why am I so slow? I think it would literally be faster to jet sideways. I don't think I want to encounter that. I don't think I want to fight anybody when I can't move properly. I guess I'm just jetting sideways back and gonna hope the issue disappears. Nope, still slow. Am I missing something? Is that a bug or... Is this normal speed? I don't... No, I think... No, that's still slow as hell. Would it be faster to go backwards? I think it's about the same speed. <laughs> right. Well, I'll see you with Pan. Back at Pan. I think my ship speed is normal again. No idea what made it go back to normal. I think. Like, I keep thinking it might be a bit slower than it's supposed to be, but it's definitely faster than it was just a minute ago. I don't know. I think I'm just maybe, maybe just messing with my head because I'm hyper paying attention to the speed of my ship. Anyway, 
we're back here, repaired my hole a bit, got some Eleutherian mysteries from the Cypress King. Um, I went over to the smuggling place and sold that starlight for a hundred coin, which is, I think, half of what I bought it for. But, you know, it's better than spacing it. Oh, and I also hired more people on board, but because it's the hour of leaving, it's particularly effective, and so it filled me up. 24 people now. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return... Hmm. Well, when I return, I'm not sure exactly which thing I'm going to do, but we have business at the House of Rods and Chains with the Sun. And Mr. Barleycorn and Mr. Menagerie. We have business at Caduceus. One of the cats needs to be let out there, I think. And also my soul is now clear, so I should be able to actually explore that place. And I have some moments of inspiration, so I should probably go back to Langley Hall as well.